I'm N5ZY and we're currently tracking the Chinese satellite X-Ray Whiskey 2 Delta XW2D. The tracker that you see here is um, actually the first, let me say the date, it's 22nd July of 2018, it's 7.08 p.m. or just 8 minutes after uh, midnight UTC. So I'm in 5ZY and this is an Arduino AZEL rotator using the common Channel Master TV antenna rotors. All credit for this project belongs to Joe VK3YSP and Julie VK3FOWL uh, of the Australian um, School Amateur Radio Club, SARCNET. Their website is www.sarcnet.org. Um, we've been working on this small revision of their Arduino satellite project for a little over a year now and it's working quite well. I don't have the RF hooked up to it at the moment but um, I, wanted, I wanted to demonstrate this now that I think we've got all the bugs worked out of it and it seems to be working quite well. Um, I've wanted to build a satellite AZEL rotator that use these uh, inexpensive TV rotators here in North America for several years and I've seen a few plans but most of them were either unfinished or took a lot of setup time um, ex for example lots of um, resistors that had to be pointed oh, there's the dog anyway uh, for calibration they used resistors and a resistor network but this does not I spent six months well I'm sorry every six months for an, a couple of years I would Google for a solution and in the spring of 2017, I found the School Amateur Radio Club's um, design. I didn't know at the time the difference between the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino, nor had I built my first Blinky project with Arduino, but I wanted to get to know uh, Arduino, and um, I thought this would be a great solution for the problem. This satellite rotator uses an electronic compass, which is zip-tied onto the beam up there, and that's what tells it where it's pointed. So once you um, have the system configured correctly, you can move it around. Uh, it will automatically calibrate itself. It automatically knows where it's pointing because it has a compass built into it. So the School Amateur Radio Club had built a portable satellite tracking system using two DC motors and they used Hamlib and GP Predict to control the rotor and AZEL tracking. Theirs was extremely unique, however, because they also implemented the LSM303D magnetic compass, allowing the Arduino to know exactly where it was pointing in both AZ and AL. It's a lot more automatic. Therefore, you set up the antenna and then start tracking. Now, I am using, uh, I'm not using Hamlib and G-Predict, I'm using uh, SAP PC. <laughs> Sat PC32 and gosh, dog. Anyway, I'm using Sat PC32. Of course, he's out here. He hasn't bothered me all day, but now that I'm shooting a video, here he is. Um, anyway, I'm using Sat PC32 because I also have the IC9100, and the IC9100 works great with Sat PC32. It does not work with Hamlib and G-Predict, uh, just not at all in satellite mode. Um, so if you want to use Hamlib and G-Predict, you'll need two radios. And I believe uh, Joe and Julie used two Yezu radios. Um, so that's, that was a small change that we also had to accommodate for was that I, I had the satellite radio, the IC9100. So, on April 6 of 2018, we successfully tracked FOX-1B across the sky using SAT-PC32 in the Arduino controller. I had used SAT-PC32 instead of G-Predict, as I said. Um, and so that's basically it. Also, with SAT-PC32, this... Um, this Arduino controller is looking for a line feed, not a carriage return, and SAT PC32 wanted a carriage return. And so I emailed 
the gentleman who makes that PC32 in Germany, and he wrote me back within a few hours with a new .exe for the rotor control, and that's what we're using. This is obviously just the demonstration of the Arduino end. And it looks like now the satellite's about to go below the horizon. But it took a lot of work, a lot of trial and error. We had to use a function generator, um, which was another component that I purchased. I used the function generator to see what size of pulses we could pulse these uh, motors with and still have them <clears throat> function. You know, what was the smallest pulse that we could do. And there's the dog. Just a few more minutes here while we're waiting on the satellite to pass. I'll pan down just a little bit. And you can see what I've bought here is a um, steel pipe and I've put it into a bucket of cement. Also down there on the ground. Uh, Right over here, you'll see the little wall wart that converts 120 volts AC to 20 volts AC. So inside this um, Arduino controller, which is inside the aluminum box, uh, we have a triac module, a four-port triac module, one port for each one of the motor motor inductors. This is an AC motor, so it's an inductive AC motor, and uh, it has two leads and then a common lead on each one of them. So, And what I used was just CAP5. I used actually on the AC motors, I used a pair of CAP5 for one winding and a pair of CAP5 for the other winding, and then I think I doubled up on, no, nah, I just used one pair on the common as well. I think I cut off the fourth pair that was there. And then, um, of course, I had to use two different ones, and I changed the colors so that when I take this thing apart, I know which motor, the wire goes to which motor. And you might be able to see the location of the sensor right there on the antenna. It's inside of a inside of a heat shrink tube that I put it in to keep it from shorting out on the boom. Obviously this is just a 70 centimeter antenna. I don't have the two meter elements on it. Um, and the reason for that is that this is just a demonstration of the rotator itself and the ability to track the satellite across the sky. So if there's a follow-up video to this later, I will have rolled out the coax and put the other elements on and uh, 
I'll try and actually make contact with an in, uh, with an antenna with a satellite. And there, it's lost the satellite, so now it's going to rotate back to its rest position of 45 degrees and 40 degrees. It overshot it. It's correcting a little. That was one of the complicated things. Since these are AC motors, they're not step motors, you can't count steps. So we just pulsate the motors to give them, just kind of nudge them along. And if the uh, satellite is quite a ways away and we need a lot more catching up, then uh, instead of pulse, well, we, we widen the pulse width. And when I say we, I mean Joe. Joe did all the programming. I just uh, put this thing together and I did some minor changes and sent reports. So there we go. This is N5ZY. Thank you, 73.